As many of you know, this select committee has a history of addressing tough issues concerning our deteriorating transportation infrastructure. Uh, we look at transit connectivity in 2014 and 2015, we addressed goods and people movement and tackled the challenge of securing funding for infrastructure improvement in 2016. Last year, having secured voter approval for Measure M in Los Angeles County and SB1 statewide, we began a discussion of how to sustain an ambitious and long overdue program of new construction and infrastructure repair. We have plenty of successes to highlight, and we will talk about some of those today. Active transportation and first last mile advances regionally. New revenues to improve local streets and sidewalks and fix potholes. Light rail expansion joining two counties. Popular commuter rail linking the entire Southern California region and more. But this is a very big but. We face a significant challenge to continue funding of important local and regional improvements. Today we are going to review the crucial transportation infrastructure improvements in our region and look at how the loss of SB1 funds would deprive our region of critical improvements to roads and bridges and local access to improve pedestrian safety and active transportation. California has more than 50,000 lane miles of state-owned highways. Infrastructure and road maintenance unmet needs are staggering in the neighborhood of $6 billion. The legislature passed SB1 last year. This was a bipartisan effort to send the governor a vehicle to invest in bringing roads, bridges, culverts, tunnels, and overpasses statewide into good repair. SB1 invests $5.4 billion annually over the next decade to fix California's transportation system. It is already addressing a backlog of repairs and upgrades while ensuring a cleaner and more sustainable system for the future. The funding transportation package through SB1 is having a powerful positive impact on the 41st district, which I represent, with over 91 projects funded throughout my district. It is already improving road safety, filling potholes, and repairing local streets in and around the San Gabriel Valley. SB1 includes $200 million in matching funds for local governments to ensure that communities get to decide what projects are most important to them. These funds are protected by a voter-approved constitutional amendment, Proposition 69, passed on this year's primary ballot. But Proposition 6 on the November ballot would repeal the provisions of SB1. Today, our panelists will address their concerns with the potential loss of SB1 funds. There will be a discussion of regional planning and the role secure funding plays in advancing those efforts. We will continue a discussion on connectivity between our various transit modes and how to most effectively move passengers to defined destinations or to efficient connectors to the desired destinations. I'm looking forward to a preview of an inter-county study looking at these various questions. Local leaders, and especially the efforts of the Ontario Mayor, Pro Tem Alan Wapner, were successful in regaining local control of the Ontario International Airport. Last year, I commented that I committed that we might begin discussions of connecting passengers to the airport, and that is occurring now, and I think Alan will update us on those discussions. When we increase connectivity between our communities, we connect people to jobs and opportunities, and our region and our regional economy benefits. The assembly, in Assemblymember Reyes' 47th district, jobs are being created by the investment of SB1 funds. These local improvements include millions of dollars dedicated to local road improvements in the 47th, including road repair to various roads in North Bloomington, road maintenance and rehabilitation of various streets in Rialto, and more improvements in Fontana. Rancho Cucamonga will benefit from the dollars awarded the city to construct the Etiwanda Avenue grade separation. This project will avert long delays at the current on-grade railroad crossings and improve the flow of freight. Not only will this project boost the local economy, but also boost public safety by removing chronic obstacles for first responders. There are many benefits to local communities in the San Gabriel Valley and the Inland Empire, 
and I'm excited to move forward with our discussions this morning. 